Now, can a gas boiler be installed in a basement or a cellar in the UK? Now, the easy answer to that is yes, but like installing a boiler in a loft, and I have done a video on that, and if you haven't seen it, I will leave a link in the description below. There are quite a few buts. So, let's get on with it and find out exactly what we need to be able to install a gas boiler in a basement or a cellar. First of all, what is the difference between a basement and a cellar? Now, a cellar is normally a place where we would store stuff like wine or just general household stuff but a basement is a place where we could actually live because it's got a window going to outside and it could have a door and both a basement and a cellar will have steps going down to it from the first or the ground floor so that's what a basement and cellar is now if you have to lift floorboards up and you have to go down and crawl on your hands and knees underneath the house, that isn't a basement or a cellar. That is a crawl space. And you ain't going to be installing a boiler in a crawl space. Anyway, let's have a look now and see what problems we could have when installing a gas boiler in a basement or a cellar. Now, according to BS6798, you cannot install an LPG boiler into a basement or a cellar unless it's like this one here. So what we've got here is this is the front of the house on the side. This is the back elevation. So the ground level drops from the front here down to the back. And the basement has a door which goes all the way down to the ground and the ground is level or falling away from the house. This is the only time you can install an LPG boiler into a basement or a cellar. Because LPG is heavier than air, if it was to leak it would sink. So if you're in a standard basement, you wouldn't smell it before it exploded. So this is the only way you can install an LPG boiler in a basement or a cellar if it's completely open on one side at ground level. Now, even if there were steps going up and then to ground level at the back here and there was a door, you still wouldn't be able to do that installation. It has to be like this where the ground is level or drops away from the house at the back. So be aware of that with LPG boilers. Now the next biggest problem we have is flues. According to the building regs and 5440, a flue, if it's lower than two meters, requires a terminal guard to protect that flue from damage. Or it used to be when they were hot, stopping people touching them. Now we don't really have that problem with flues nowadays because the flue temperature is only about 55 degrees coming off there so you're not really going to get burnt. So it's there to protect the flue, stopping it getting damaged and stopping stuff getting sucked into the air side of it. But what if your basement doesn't allow you 300 mil from underneath the flue system. Well, you could do this. It's not advisable, and you would seek permission from the boiler manufacturers to be able to do this. But what you could do is, you could dig away the ground underneath the flue in like a 300 mil box. So 300 mil from the side, 300 mil from that side, and you have to be 300 or more deep. But it has to be like a soak away, so it's got to have gravel in there, so if any water gets in there it runs out. And you do actually have to be slightly higher than the ground level. So if that does flood, there is still somewhere for it to go. And that is again, so it stops stuff getting in there. But snow, going to be a big problem if you've got snow on that one. So it's one of the things that's not advised to do. But one of the things you do see a lot of is this. 
where the flue is just 300 mil above the ground and then they use the plume management kit to get it above the two meters because you don't want the plume to be a plumey nuisance so they take the flue higher than two meters but you still require a terminal guard and you can buy specialist terminal guards like this one here where you can just slot it over the boiler flue and it has an automatic cutout so the plume kit can go out there but one thing with the plume kit you've got to make sure you don't go over the length of the flue system with your plume kit again referring to manufacturer's instructions also if your flue terminates over a public walkway or a path then you will need to make sure the flue goes more than 2.1 meters off the floor but if your terminal is still lower than the two meters you will still require a terminal guard now what do you think about this picture here as you can see we've got the full flue coming out and it's then terminating definitely lower than two meters you should also be able to tell that it is a Worcester flue now is this allowed well technically according to the Worcester manufacturers instructions yes it is but it's lower than two meters so it still requires a terminal guard now according to the unsafe situations IGMG 11 are you going to find any problems with not having a terminal guard well basically it's classed and not to manufacturers instructions not to current standards not to the building regs is it dangerous no but it is advisable now what could they have done in this situation well in this situation they could have taken the flu higher than two meters as long as it doesn't exceed the maximum flue lengths for that boiler whether it's 9 meters 10 meters 11 meters it depends on the manufacturer and it depends on the boiler so yes this is allowed but in my uh, thinkings of it it looks absolute dog and really they should have thought about other sighting rather than doing this so that's a couple of problems you will have when you are installing boilers in basements or cellars the other ones are what do we do about the condensate and what do we do about the blow off or the pressure relief valve pipe when the boiler is actually lower than ground level now there is another alternative for the pressure relief valve to be installed higher than the boiler so if your boiler is in uh, below ground level and you do want to get your pressure relief valve pipe out of the wall i do know worcester allow you to do it because they produce a technical bulletin and there's also a guide on how to install a remote pressure relief valve from their boiler the main things they say is you cannot leave the pressure relief valve in the boiler that has to be removed and the remote one cannot be higher than three meters now if you know of any other boiler that allows you to do this put it in the comments down below guys and let's know which boilers allow us to put remote prvs in but i do know what's to do it but this technical bulletin is is uh, from 2019 but i do know you can still buy the kits online so Remote PRVs are possible, but again, you'll need to get the permission of the boiler manufacturer before you do it. Now, if you have a drain in your cellar, so one that's not in the floor, it could be in the wall somewhere, you could even have a sink down there. Then this is the perfect way of installing your condensate and your blow off into that drainage system. So your condensate could go straight into the drain pipe. And then your safety discharge, your blow-off pipe, could then go into some kind of waterless trap, whether you're using a HEPVO trap, whether you're using a Tesla trap, or whether you're using a Hotton. These are designed so you can put them into a waste pipe and you won't get any smells coming back in. 
because obviously the blow off wouldn't be able to go out through the wall because you would be below ground. So this is the perfect setup if you do have a drain in the cellar basement. But what if you don't have a drain in the cellar or basement? Now one of the ways of getting you over the problem of not having a drain in the cellar is to use a condensate pump. So let's take a look at this condensate pump where you can put your safety discharge pipe into. Now the first thing about it is you can't just buy any one. It has to be a specialist one which will take 100 degrees C because when the water blows off it will be at 3 bar and it could be near boiling point which would be 100 degrees C. So it needs to be able to take that pressure, take that volume of water and take that temperature. So they make specialist ones where you can put the condensate in and the safety discharge. Purposely made for compi boilers or system boilers. A couple of things on the condensate though, because I've seen where <laughs> they've run condensate pipes and just left it on the floor to go to a drain in the center of the room. Now, one kilowatt of heat on average produces about 0.1 litres of condensate. So it could actually make 800 to 1000 litres of water per year. So if you've got that running across the floor, the stone floor, the brick floor or whatever you've got in your basement cellar, then it could start rotting it away and could also start rotting the wall and the foundations because the pH for condensate is three to four on the pH scale, so it makes it acidic. So just bear that in mind, you will have to run it to a drain. So this condensate pump is perfect for when you're in the cellar because it can get rid of, like I say, the condensate and the discharge. So how do you install them? Well, obviously you would install it to manufacturer's instructions, but they basically just go into the pump and then it pumps the water out on a flexible tube, which is normally about three eighths uh, in diameter. Now, most of them give you a maximum head you can pump of five meters. But if you're in a basement, then you're not really gonna go much more than say three meters. But where do we connect this end? Now, if we're connecting it into a waste, uh, a sink or a basin, then the trap on the basin or the sink will need to be 75 mil. That's because we're creating an air break at the plug hole. So oh, you can discharge it to drain, but also we've got to think about freezing problems as well like we do when we're not in the envelope of the building so like uh, if you're in a loft you need to think about insulation there but also in a cellar or a basement if it's not heated then you will need to make sure you insulate all your pipe work obviously not your gas pipe but your flow return your hot and cold will need to be insulated but that is in the new building regs as well, part of the building regs. Now, is there a special way of wiring in these condensate pumps? Well, yes, and this is how we do it. So we've got the fuse spur from the boiler with our live neutral and earth in there. Normally that would go to our permanent live, our neutral and earth at the boiler. So what we can do is we can put a junction box in so we can take our live wire from the fuse spur with a three amp fuse in there into the junction box. We can then take a live wire up to the motor on the condensate pump. We can also do the same with the neutral. We could take a neutral up there because it's 230 volts. It'll need a neutral to work. And then because it's 230 volts, we need an earth. Okay, so that's wiring up the pump. But how do we wire up the boiler then? 
Well, we take the neutral from the junction box and put it into the boiler connection, and we take the earth and we put it into the boiler connection. But to feed the live is slightly different. So we come out of the junction box and we go into this common supply, and this is the high level float switch. So this will be low down. So it will send the power to the normally closed, which will then go through the junction box and then feed the boiler. So when the pump's in normal operation, it's pumping away, the water's going, we've got a nice circuit to keep the boiler running. Now, something happens to the pump, pump breaks, gets blocked up, something seriously happens to it. We don't want the boiler to continue to run because if it does it's still going to keep making condensate and we're going to end up flooding the place. So what happens is if it does get that this common will switch over to the normally open and take away the power supply going to the main boiler, the main feed for the boiler. So the boiler will go off completely. Now, I have seen people wire these in to the controls. So, the room stats, rather than the main life for the boiler. So, <laughs> that could be a big problem. Now, if it's a system boiler, or it's a, 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 a heat-only boiler, then we could actually go through the switched live wire, because the boiler wouldn't work if we broke the switched live wire from the zone valves so there is that way but this is from a combi now on this normally open switch we could put an audible alarm on that so when the common switch is over takes away the power from the boiler if it's in the basement or cellar you wouldn't know it's gone off so the alarm then sounds and then you know there's something seriously wrong with the boiler so that's how we wire it into a combi. We are switching off the live supply because we need it to go off completely because some boilers can still make condensate even when they're running in hot water. So we're not switching the switch live, we're switching the permanent live because it's a safety device. So that's my look at installing a boiler in a basement or a cellar hopefully you've liked the video and i'm so sorry about that noise in the background all the time it's they're doing work on the uh, mast which is above the sensor they've been here for a few days now and i can't it's driving me mad so i'm sorry about that but hopefully i will catch you on the next one cheers